Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Life on the Race. Hope you guys are doing well today. Um, Swiss watch exports were released. I'm a little bit late to the party here, but we're going to be going over them for the month of April 2021. Um, positive results. I think that, that watches are back on track, just like a lot of the other economic sectors of, of the world, um, sort of post-pandemic in, in some nations, sort of recovering in, in others. Um, so I'm going to go over some of the results. There were some interesting results that I, I want to point out in this in this episode. So I'll, I'll get into those, especially when it comes to the different price segments. I think that is somewhat telling. I did make my own conclusion from there, but we'll see We'll see what you guys think as well. Um, as always, I will start off with the previous month's results. So March 2021, um, massive growth plus 37% um, year over year um, compared to March 2020, which was just before uh, the pandemic really gripped the, the, the entire watch economy. Watch exports were around 1.87%. Um, uh, billion Swiss francs, so um, decent result there. 12 month moving average was still uh, negative. For the most part, all price segments were up, which is I think an encouraging sign um, and really showed that that there was a fairly good um, recovery on its way. Top markets were sort of your, your typical names, China, USA, Hong Kong, Japan, and Singapore um, with with uh, positive results. Interesting, Japan had negative results um, for, for, the, for the year over the year results, uh, for the year over year. Um, uh, kind of uh, results. Um, my predictions for April uh, were way off, um, but the my, my prediction for um, the the 2020 to 2021 year over year growth was about 35 percent, similar to to what this past month was. The results were so positive that the the Federation for um, Swiss Horology for the Swiss hor uh, Horology industry. Um, actually decided they were not going to compare the results to 2020. They actually decided to compare to 2019. If you look at the 2020 to 2019 or 2020 to 2021 um, kind of overall numbers, you saw um, Swiss watch exports in April 2021 amount to 1.8 billion Swiss francs. This was a 446% change compared to 2020, which is, an, you know, it's pretty obvious. Swiss watch exports were absolutely dead this time last year, and so um, there's going to be a massive growth rate. I was definitely quite quite off. If you, what they ended up doing for this report was they compared it to 20, 2019 results, so the change from 2019 was actually about two percent growth, which I don't even know if that keeps up with inflation. Uh, let me know in the comments if it does, but I think it's it's very minimal when it comes to some sort of growth rate from 2019. If we go to the 12 month moving average, we are. It obviously popped back up. We're right under, uh, right um, above that five negative five percent, uh, twelve month moving average. So, on our way back to some sort of uh, positive results for the Swiss watch exports, but still fairly negative. And I will say it's a little bit, it's quite a small growth rate if you compare it to 2019. But I think it was expected if you had a pandemic in between. If we move on to watches by uh, material, you can see that for the most part, every single. Um, uh, most uh, materials were, were positive. Interesting steel, gold steel, and other materials were all negative in terms of units. Um, gold and steel were also down by um, the Swiss francs um, by negative 3.9%, so fairly interesting change there. I think it is pretty telling to, if you look at the units that were sold uh, at the bottom of the total when you compare 2019 to 2021, the, the um, amount in Swiss francs that were sold was up by 2.5%. But if you actually look at the, the the units change, you saw those fell by 26%, which I think is pretty telling. I think it still still shows we're sort of coming out of it. People are buying watches, but, but um, they're buying more expensive watches. And we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, if we look at watches by price category, this is where I think the real story is actually um, fairly interesting. So. Looking at the price categories, you can see sub 200 Swiss franc, 200 to 500, and 500 to 3,000 Swiss franc all had negative results in both units and value, but the over 3,000 Swiss francs were up both in units and value. This is a very interesting, interesting point. I think this shows, especially because the value of the 10% increase in the value of watches that were sold or exported above 3,000 Swiss francs was 10%. I think this shows you that people are buying very expensive watches, but the Sort of the the bulk of the industry, which is the the um, you know 200 to 3,000 Swiss franc um, kind of uh, price sector, um, there really isn't a lot of movement going on there, and I think that shows that 
watch companies are selling to, or I guess um, after they're exported and they get to retailers, they're selling it to people who have, who have disposable income to buy luxury goods like watches. And so people who don't have um, as much money are actually not spending it on luxury goods. I think that actually kind of tells you a little bit about the recovery that's going on right now. Um, I don't think that um, the majority of people are having a good time in the recovery. I think those who are, in, who are um, have more disposable income are recovering a little bit quicker. But those, you know, the main sector of the economy is probably recovering at a very, very slow rate. And I wouldn't be surprised if this continued into next month where we saw that the um, price change or by if we saw that the uh, price categories really were telling about how the recovery is actually going. So you can see, you know, negative 26 in price category uh, in units, but up 2.5% really driven by those more expensive pieces. If we look at main markets, again, typical names, USA, China, Hong Kong, Japan, Singapore, and United Kingdom. A um, couple of interesting things that I thought about uh, thought from, from this list. Um, Hong Kong and Japan compared 2019 to 2020. Um, had negative results, which I thought was a very interesting kind of uh, look into this. Um, you know, these markets were fairly strong in 2019, I would say, and so um, to have negative results here, I think, also shows a little bit about those types of economies that are that are recovering. I think 75% growth for China is absolutely insane compared to 2019. Again, showing their absolute resilience um, in 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 the watch market. Um, if, and, and then, you know, 1%, 1% United Kingdom is really just basically a sort of like inflationary sort of very minimal, minimal growth there. Um, you can see in the chart that for, for, the, for the world distribution of Swiss watch exports, you can see 2020 and 2021 are, are basically negligent and they, they, irrelevant, they made it irrelevant on the, on the chart. Um, if we take a look at the uh, last thing, which is sort of the um, total value for um, by region, you can see that um, all regions except for Europe saw positive variation, which I think is fairly encouraging. Um, I think Europe, Europe uh, in 2019 um, was a little bit softer, um, but you can see Asia, Oceania, America, and Africa all up. Um, and then, of course, Af uh, Asia making up 54% of the total share of the entire kind of uh, pocket of, of watch exports is, is to be expected. Um, so that is the April 2020, 2021 results. As I always do, I will make my predictions for next month. I think it's going to be much of the same story. I think the U.S. has probably, um, the recovery has sort of accelerated, I'd say, compared to, to April. And so I think what's going to happen is April, uh, um, the U.S. results will, will definitely take off. I think China will continue to be resilient. I think European, um, European countries are going to be softer next month. Um, I'm probably predicting if they do again 2019 to 2021 comparison, I'm going to guess maybe like a 3 or 4% growth rate compared for, for, to 2019. Um, I think that would probably encompass it quite, quite nicely. Let me know in the comment section below what you think the growth rate is going to be for May 2021. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Also, um, if you haven't seen our article where we cover the Swiss watch export results, be sure to check it out on our website, lifeontherist.com. Um, we post editorials for every single video that we create on our YouTube channel, so you can go and read those on our website. Um, if you are not already subscribed to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button if you like videos about watches. We're really just watch enthusiasts who create videos about so many wide, so many topics within the watch world. It's really um, fun to cover everything from vintage to modern to learning about something that you've never seen or looking at a, a my, uh, independent watch company. It, it really does vary what types of uh, videos we come out with, so be sure to do that. Also, we have some new watches on our watch store if you want to check those out. We also are going to be releasing some more videos so you can see these watches on the wrist in the metal. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, if you wouldn't mind hitting that like button for us, it really does help us out with our analytics. Um, and if you wouldn't mind sharing this with the watch enthusiasts that you're friends with, that'd be great. And with that said, guys, thank you so much for watching and until next time.